When I first realized that I could draw, I was in kindergarten. And um, the, the assignment, the teacher said, everybody draw a picture of your family. So I drew my family, whatever. So she took them up. And later on, she called me up to her desk and she said, did you draw this to me? I'm like, yeah, I'm like thinking, man, what did I draw? And when my mother came to pick me up at school that day, like they were just like, he needs to be, here's a list of art things he needs, we need to get him involved. And that's when it clicked, like, I can do something that other people can't do. Concert poster art, when I first got into it, it was throwaway art, nobody cared. I mean, the, the posters were done to promote shows. And people, go, they're like, oh, well, but you were promoting, you were doing posters for Jane's Addiction and Weezer and Deftones. And, and they don't get that when I started doing posters, like the Deftones were not the Deftones yet. They were just, what's that little band, the Deftones? What is that, you know? So like the art was, and the art was really visual language. It was like, you hang them on the street and like the people that saw it and connected, like, hey, if you get this, this show is for you. If you don't get it, keep walking, it's not for you. You know, I can remember in the early days, the promoters never would keep posters for themselves. They'd be like, okay, we need 50 posters to promote the show. We would do the prints and the promoter would actually give you a little extra money to go hang them up. The promoter never wanted me anything. He just wanted to know that the show was being promoted. If the show sold out quicker, he would be like, he'd be like, oh yeah, we want to get another one here. But they didn't care about the art. They trying to sell a show. Well, the big change, like it was with so many things, was eBay. eBay comes along and then these people who want to collect the posters are looking for the posters and the promoters catch on. A lot of these cats who have grown up collecting posters become promoters, right? So they're like, oh my God, I'm promoting this show and I can get Jermaine Rogers to do a poster for it. Oh yeah, I need 60 of them to promote. Uh, just drop them all off to me when you're done. And maybe, you know, 20 of them get on the street. The rest of them get stored away. Uh, when a promoter hires you to do a print, he's not, he doesn't have the right to hire you to create merchandise. He has the right to hire you to create a promotional print. The minute you sell one, it becomes merchandise. Well, when the poster art started to get huge and collectible and big amounts of money, I mean, you had artists suddenly, I mean, like in 2005, I was doing posters that I would sell new for 75 bucks. And literally the next week, they would be selling on eBay for $150, $200. That's why rock poster art is something to watch. We're talking about things to watch for collectability. You know, you've got so many legs for it to stand on as a collectible. The art, the artist, the band, the limited edition aspect. I mean, it's, that's a safe choice to collect. Andy Warhol said something really interesting. He said that when people buy artwork, they are not really buying the artwork. They're buying a piece of the artist. And I think that's the beautiful thing is like, you know, is it a toy? I don't even like to call them toys, you know? I think the sideshow stuff is solidly art. It's like perfectly blending pop culture and art. You can't call it a toy. It's a sculpture. And the reason I have a collection is because it connects me to memories. The popular culture, which in many cases is equivalent with throwaway culture, of one generation almost seems to be invariably the fine art of the next generation. <laughs> The reason that vintage Star Wars figures on the car are so valuable is because when we were kids, nobody left them on the car. That's why they're valuable on the car. Um, and it's a, really, it's a dynamic because like collectibles are really defined by supply and demand. The thing that will be collectible in the next generation is something that right now nobody cares about. If kids aren't really playing with toys today, they're not gonna have the same connection. So you gotta ask yourself, okay, so what are kids playing with today? Kids are playing with video game systems today. How many years has it been where you go in a Goodwill and there's tons of old Nintendo cards, nobody cares? You're starting to see a little, little tremor and like people like, oh, I wanna collect all the Nintendo things. You know, because that is what they remember. 
Because collectibles really are all about the energy of, of memory. And like, there were those figures, like for me, that I could never find, but the, the time invested in searching, I think all of that builds, you, you know, synapses and stuff, you just, and now, if you want something, what do you do? You're like, oh, I'll go on eBay. It's there to be had if you want to pay for it. It's the blessing to the part of you that wants instant gratification. I think it's a curse to the part of you that wants good memories. I think a lot of the things that happen today in the toy world, I guess that's the hard part, you know? Some of it is really going to be throwaway culture, but some of it is really going to be like the next generation, our children, they're going to look at it and go, wow.